Frigidaire presents Hollywood Star Time. Today we bring you Hangover Square, starring Vincent Price and Linda Darnell with Faye Marlowe. Each week at this time, Frigidaire brings you radio versions of Hollywood's finest motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Today, Vincent Price and Linda Darnell with Faye Marlowe in the first radio production of the powerful 20th Century Fox picture, Hangover Square. Vincent Price currently may be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Dragon Witch, which also stars Gene Tierney, and Revere, and Walter Houston. Now, in just a few moments, Hangover Square. Midnight. In the empty streets of London of 1903, wormed and drifted the fog. Into the shocked brain of the man who groped his way through the dark streets, into the tired, tottering mind of a genius, crept the fog. A light was burning in one shop on Palace Street, an antique dealer taking inventory late at night. And toward that blur of light, the man with a fog brain guided his footsteps. Who are you? No! Get out of my shop! Get out! Keep away! Keep! No! 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 Ah! Morning. The well-appointed semi-basement studio... Of George Harvey Bow, musical genius, Hangover Square, London. Three times around the square to cure a hangover, they used to say, in London of 1903. Oh, George, I'm so glad you're back. Oh, Barbara, you here? Well, I, I found your door unlocked and I came in. I, I've been playing your piano. I, I've been waiting for you. Oh? I wanted to tell you the news. Father read part of your new concerto for piano and orchestra. He wants you to play it before a very select group at our home. When you've finished it, of course. Oh, Barbara, I'm, I'm enormously confident. Father and I stopped by last night after the theater. You weren't here. I... I don't know where I was last night. It happened again? Yes. Have you seen the morning papers? No. An antique dealer in Fulham was murdered last night. He was stabbed to death and his shop set on fire. But what has that to do with you? When I came to myself in Fulham this morning, I... I found this antique dagger in my pocket. <gasps> Barbara, could I have done it? Oh, no, no, of course not. I'm going to Scotland Yard. Please? No, no, not exactly. There's a Dr. Alan Middleton there. He's written several fine books on criminology. He has some new ideas about the mind, the psychology of crime. I must see him. I'll go with you, George. I must. Oh, there are no stains on your antique dagger. Besides, Mr. Bone, the antique dealer was killed with a broader bladed knife. There, George, you see? Oh, I was afraid. I I was afraid I'd done it, Dr. Middleton. Mm. Tell me... What brings on these mental lapses? Well, when I'm tense or excited, any loud, loud, discordant sound may bring them on. Yes, I, I've seen cases where harsh, jarring noises have caused mental lapses. I never remember anything that happened afterwards. May I make my recommendations? Oh, by all means, Doctor. What? Relax. Find some other outlet than music for your subconscious emotions. Go out, meet people. Find some new interests. Uh, you might try the king's head across the square from you to begin with. See how the other half lives. It might be fun. Yes. Yes, it, it might be fun at that. The king's head. I'll try that this very evening. Have you seen Joe? 
Where the dickens can he be? Have you seen Joe? No, where on earth is he? Harry's here and Larry's here and Jerry, Jack and Jim. But Joe has flew the coop. We ain't seen either of them. Have you seen Joe? Joe is very sincere. Have you seen Joe? No, he ain't anywhere. <laughs> Nettle Longdon? Who are you? And close my dressing room door. Well, my name is George Bone. I I heard you singing out front. Did you? Yes, I'm a composer of sorts, you see. Oh, are you now? Your singing gave me an idea for a song. I could use a new song. Is it any good? Well, let me run through it on your piano here. All right. Well, it, it starts like this. Not bad at all. In fact, it's very good. Oh, thank you, Miss Wanda. Just call me Netta, George. Eddie. Netta. Eddie Costas, you great, big, successful producer, come in. My word, Netta, what an apartment. <laughs> I'd say you've been doing very well yourself since that George Harvey Bourne began writing your songs for you. Oh, but he's such a dreadful bore. That's really too bad, Netta. Is it? Why? Well, I'm meeting a group of gentlemen at Bufina's restaurant at midnight. They'll decide tonight whether to put up the money for a new show of mine. Now, if I could present some fresh talent... You mean me? Yes, you, but um, with a new George Bone song before midnight. Well? Well, George was working on a wonderful idea, but he stopped. Start him again. Start him. Mr. Eddie Carstairs, I'll bring you a brand new George Bone number before midnight. At Bufino's? I'll be there. Count on it. <laughs> George. Well, well, may I come in and play it for you? Oh, George, it's, it's so late. May I have a song copy? Oh, but you said any time before midnight. But I... I have such a beastly headache, really, George. May I have the song? All right. Here. I'm sorry about your headache, Netta. Can I get you something? Oh, thank you, darling. I, I'd just rather go to sleep. Do you mind awfully, George, dear? No, Ned, I... Well, I just thought... You are a dear. Good night, George. Good night. On. Into the city again crept the night mist. Across the city strode George Harvey Bone. Bitterly lonely and disappointed. There was a place that was always a glow of translucent yellow in the night fog. A place of warmth and gaiety and companionship sought out by the people of the theater and of the arts. Bufinos. Everyone went there. One more round of champagne. Netta, my beautiful. Netta, my newest star. We have triumphed. To the next Eddie Carstairs production, Gay Love. To Georgie Porty Bone, my favorite genius. Oh, bother George Bone. <laughs> you better bother him, because we'll need more than just one of his magical songs for this show. So better. Oh, bother it's George. Now, you're in for it. Netta, you told me you had a headache. Well, I had. Mr. Carstairs sent for me just... Ten minutes ago, on business. But you couldn't have dressed and come here so soon. Are you going to make a scene, George? You must have been practically dressed when I spoke to you. You knew you were going out then. Eddie, take me home. Come along, Netta. Oh, Netta, wait. Sometimes you can be a miserable bore, George. Oh, Netta. 
Excuse me, monsieur, but is something the matter? No, nothing. Thank you. As you say, monsieur. George. Oh, Barbara, you here too? Well, Father and I stopped in after the concert. Will you join us? No, thank you. George, George, how much longer are you going to waste your talent on someone with no ability and less reputation? Isn't that my affair, Barbara? Well, in the end, you'll kill your inspiration and you'll be left flat, just as she left you a moment ago. Let me alone. Very well, George. If you have anything you'd like to say to me, I'll be home in half an hour. Good night. Oh, mademoiselle, be careful! Stop. Stop it. Noise. Discord. Horrible, horrible discord. Sometimes you can be a miserable bore, George. Shame. Humiliation. George Harvey Bone, promising young composer, publicly humiliated. Anything you'd like to say to me? I'll be home in half an hour. Kill. 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 experience for you, Barbara, and right here in our own home. I'm all right now, Father. There's nothing further to fear, my dear. But Dr. Middleton and the police are searching the grounds very, very thoroughly. Mr. Henry, Barbara, why are the police here? Well, someone attempted to strangle Barbara a half hour ago. Please, Father. Who was it? Well, I don't know. I was sitting here before the fire when suddenly I felt something choking me. I screamed and Father heard me. And I'm still alive. Are you all right, George? Am I all right? I I hurt you very much tonight. Oh, Barbara, I deserved it. I I broke my promise about the concerto. Hey, what's that? Will you keep your promise now, George? Will you finish your concerto? Oh, yes, Barbara, I will. I'll stay with it to the very end. Oh, thank you, George. Thank you. Perfectly lovely. Is it, Netta? Oh, wonderful. Of course you'd know. Um, is this it? Does it go like this? No, 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 Netta. That's the wrong tempo. Oh, it's my tempo, George. Listen. When to live, breathe a flame. And to eyes bring sighs that betray love. Oh, never. Never I've missed you so much. Ah, my new show opens November the 5th, George. Guy Fawkes Day. Why aren't we working all that together, George? I need song. I need you, Netta. You could have me, George. When to live. Breathe a flame. Oh, George, George, play it. Play it that way for me. The show is a great success. Oh, you were magnificent. You might close my dressing room door, George. Oh, I'm much too excited to make sense, darling. Opening night, the great success. The children outside lighting enormous bonfires and burning effigies of Guy Fawkes. All that and... And something else, Netta. Yes, George? Netta, I want you to marry me. Marry you? Why, oh, yes, you said... Oh, but look, old boy, I'm afraid you're a bit late for that. You see, Netta's marrying me next week. No. Netta. Netta, it's not true. Yes, George, I'm marrying Eddie. But you took my song from the concerto. You promised yourself to me. You said oh, so. Oh, stop it, George. And all the time you were promised to him. Come, George, no nonsense now. You've been stealing her from me all the time, stealing my music, stealing her, cunning, conniving, thieving. 
I'll kill you. Look out, you idiot. George, George stop it. Stop it, do you I... hear me? Forgive me, Ned. Forgive me. Forgive you. Get out of here, you, you lunatic. Never. Get out. Get out. Get out! In a few moments, Hollywood Star Time will bring you the second act of Hangover Square, starring Linda Darnell and Vincent Price with Faye Marlowe. Hollywood Star Time continues now with the first radio presentation of the 20th Century Fox picture Hangover Square, starring Vincent Price and Linda Darnell with Faye Marlowe. Linda Darnell soon may be seen co-starring with Cornell Wilde, Gene Crane, and William Ice in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production, Centennial Summer. Now, Act Two of Hangover Square. Piercing November night, stalked George Harvey Bone. Intolerable hurt and blinding fury, fighting for possession of his reason. Shame, humiliation. Forgive you. Get out of here, you lunatic. Get out. Get out. All about him, men and boys were parading by torchlight, parading with life size effigies of Guy Fawkes. Soon to be burned on the huge bonfires being prepared throughout London. Oh, be a sport, sir. It's going to be a big bonfire in Cheney Yard and fireworks. Go oh, about a point, sir. Eh? No, no, go away. And suddenly at the crossing, a huge horse drawn omnibus swerved as the horses took fright at the blazing torches. And the monstrous vehicle ground savagely against the curb, turning over slowly. With a great grind, the horse is screaming and neighing with mortal terror. Stop. Stop it. Stop that horrible noise. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Get out of here, you lunatic. Shame. Humiliation. Magnificent, cleansing, consuming fire. 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 I'll be out in just a minute, Sir Henry. Getting my coat on and here I come. Ah, dressed in style for the great day. Oh, Dr. Middleton. Uh, yes, George. Where are Sir Henry and Barbara? They were waiting for me to drive me to their home for the concerto. I happened to drop by since Sir Henry and Barbara wanted to prepare the hall in advance. I, I chose them to run along. I offered to drive you across the square. That was very kind of you, Dr. Uh, Littleton. Not at all. Uh, while I've been waiting, I was most flattered to notice my book on criminal methods on your bookshelf. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I uh, wondered if you bought the book because I wrote it. Oh, because there's a picture of a thuggy cord in it. A thuggy cord? Yes, a heavy cord or a cloth band with a knot tied in the middle for murder by strangulation. But why should that interest me in particular? Did, that's all. Because I also noticed that one of the tiebacks on your draperies is wrinkled in the center for being tied into a knot more than once. I... I don't know anything about it. There I... was a big bonfire in Cheney Yard the night that Nella Longden disappeared. I was never there. I... But you were seen carrying an effigy of Guy Fawkes that night. Only it wasn't just a rag and straw model. It was Nella Longden killed with this drapery tie back. No. Yes. 
was during one of your mental lapses. No, I... I must get to my concert. No, 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 wait, George. The shock of all this, plus the tremendous strain of playing tonight, may prove too much for you. Get out of my way, Doctor. Your mind may break now. Please, like a good fellow, come along with me. No. Then I shall have to use force. No, Doctor, I shall have to use force. Oh. Good, good. I'm very sorry to be late, Barbara. To Henry. Oh, no apologies, my boy. Oh, my friends. My friends. Thank you. He has arrived. Our composer, George Harvey Bone. <laughs> you take your place at the piano, George, and, and uh, watch me at the conductor's podium. Yes, indeed. Good luck. Good luck, George. Thank you. Are you ready, gentlemen? Ready, sir. It's Middleton. Dr. Middleton, he's back. He's sitting down next to Barbara. Got away. He's alive. He's here. Get him out of here. Get him out! George! Great Scotsman! I'm sorry, George. But you must come with me. I now. won't go with you. I'm not insane. I won't go. I'm really sorry, George. I've got to finish my concerto. Oh, George, it might be too late for you then. Keep away. You see this lamp? Do you? Do you? George. George, do you want to set the whole place on fire? Put down that lamp, George. I warned you. I warn you. Stand Stop. back or I'll Stop it, it, fool. Stop. I'm going to. I warned you. George. Oh, God. Come back. You've got to stay and hear my concerto. Oh, George, please. We've got to get out of here. Now let go of me. George, please. Come on, come on. No, no, I've got to finish. Everyone must stay. Now, loose, Barbara. We've got to leave him. No, I won't go. I'll die here. If we don't go, we'll all be caught. Look, it's all on fire. Come on, Barbara. Come no, on. George. Come on, Barbara. Come on, Barbara. We'll come back. The audience must stay. The musicians must stay. Audience. Musicians. Come back! Please come back! You must hear it! To the last chord! The final note! To the very end! Listen! Do you hear? This is my immortality! Now I shall never die! This, this shall live for me forever! This, listen to the end, to the very finish! Too late for the fire engines now, but the house is a mass of flames. Listen, it's the end. Listen, he's going to finish it after all, just as he promised. Oh, it's magnificent. Bravo, George Harvey Bone. Bravo. Goodbye, George. Well done, my darling. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. I thank you for remaining until the very end. The end. The very, very. Truly magnificent performance. We say thank you, Vincent Price, Linda Darnell, and Faye Marlowe, and thanks to the splendid supporting cast, Joe Kearns, Carlton Young, John Brown, Herbert Rollins, and Jerry Farber. Vincent Price will return in just a moment. 
The radio adaptation of Hangover Square was written by Milton Geiger. Ignat Tilsberg was at the piano, and the music was supervised by Alfred Newman. The entire production was under the direction of Robert L. Redd. Hollywood Star Time is presented each week at this time with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer, who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire home appliances. Electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Now here's Vincent Price. Well, Vincent, we say welcome home to Hollywood Star Time. Welcome home is about right, Wendell. I was here just seven weeks ago when you did the radio version of Shock. And I might add, I'm a very loyal listener between appearances. I'm certainly looking forward to hearing next week's show when Betty Grable will be here for Diamond Horseshoe. So till then, Wendell, I'll say goodbye. This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. Casting session.